Good evening, everyone. I am DJ Squirrel here on Tree Time here on both CR and Apex. Now that we are allowed to do this, and I would like to welcome you all to our show where we talk about all kinds of fandom things, play a lot of weird music, and do whatever. Now we really annoy the living crap out of everyone that listens yes. to us. So we're going to do some proper intros, and be forewarned, we have a lot of people on this show at all times. Sometimes we talk over each other, and we'll try to keep that to a minimum as best we can. Emphasis on try. Emphasis on try. So, uh, without further ado, let's start introducing, introducing, introducing people. First up, we have Zai. Who is from Britain? Introducting sounds like a better word. Well, now it's added to the dictionary. Okay. And of course, everyone's cranky over Mayor Mishrady. Fuck you. Indeed. Thank you. Also, aren't I the over mayor here? I mean, I may not run the show, but. You You were the one who smells of uh, fire and brimstone. She's the one who's marshmallow plate. Up next, we have QD, who is our, who is our kazooologist. And de facto uh, band leader, so. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have. I'm telling our... you, I'm going, as soon as we meet, I am taking that kazoo and I'm melting it in front of you. <laughs> Shove it in his nose. No, um, because then he could still play it. <laughs> Well, then shove it up his nose and then melt it, because then he can't play it, and then he's some sort of pain. And then he oh, can't breathe. These, intro, uh, these introductions are going to take the whole out, first hour. Yes, yep. can we move along. And then we have our wonderful detective of fanfics and drunkenness, Sherlock. Sherlock. Not drunk yet, though. I did pick up a bottle of uh, uh, sparkling rose wine so I can make a ton of Twilights. Yep. Up next, we have his waifu, Ten Kage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to murder you. I still think that he's yeah. her waifu. I'll pr- that would make more sense. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to stop reacting to that because there's no sense feeding the trolls, right, boys? Uh. Oh. Oh, dear. If you have any cosplay questions, she is the person to ask. Wahahaha. The evil cosplay master. Mistress. Whichever. Next, we also have the girl that fans about everything, including fans, because fans also need fans. The fangirl. Hello, I am the fangirl, yes. Then lastly, I don't know what we really do with him. He's just kind of here to be here. Oh, wait, he's our news guy. That's right. Hi, Trade. Yes, I... Per- he's also our laugh track. Yes, I am Trademark. I am the laugh track slash news reporter slash asshole of the group. Nice to meet you. Slash, whi- slash whipping boy. Hey. We have seven tombstones prepared, to depend- and all of which depend upon the method of death. It's like a graveyard roulette. How's he going to die? Take your bets, folks. Take your bets. At we this rate, we need, start, we need to start doing a joke like in South Park. Oh my God, we killed trademark. You so, bastard! I was about to say, and ironically enough, I did graduate South Park Junior Senior High School. <laughs> Is trademark the go cows? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we're the Burrows. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would rather have been a cow. Honestly, sweetie, if I went to high school with you, I probably would have put a petition and stuff to say, can we just be changed to the cow so the joke can just go full circle? <laughs> to be fair, I think yeah. it's uh, South Park Elementary that are the cows. Well, yeah. It's actually called Edith Teeters. Anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. So... so. And now it was something yes. completely different. Yes, I believe the first fandom we will be talking about tonight uh, is the My Little Pony fandom. So if any of you are not fans of My Little Pony, 
I am not sorry. No, you know, because animal? we are primarily we are primarily a pony sh- uh, uh, yes. show. Hence, why we have the fluffiest, whitest of all the ponies with us as a co-host. That is why I'm here. You doing okay you're there, Rares? Sure why you're here? It's has just sa- been has a very Sapphire, long day. Did, has Sapphire Shores made you put, uh, sew another twenty dresses? Thirty-five. Oh, ouch. Damn. In any case, I have, I have news related to the My Little Pony fandom and uh, franchise as a whole. Please tell me there's a new season they put out. Not yet. Damn God it. Damn it. Anyway, uh, for those of you who uh, know AC Rick, or Ace Race Best, like, for some reason, I don't know. Ace Everyone calls Race him AC Best. Race it Best. Is. Yeah, it's weird. No, he calls himself AC Race Best. Huh. Yeah, they, That's how he's, know it. he's called AC, but his name is Ace Race Best. I don't know. But Maybe either way, regardless of C. how you say his name, he's going to appear on Steve Harvey's show. Oh <laughs> my god, what for? I have no idea. There's Steve a tweet. Harvey. There's a there's a tweet on his Twitter, AC Race Best. On January twenty fourth, I will be on the Steve Harvey show representing bronies on the Is It Weird segment of the show. Oh god. Oh my god. Is he going to defend us spectacularly or is he going to make everybody think we're all freaks? That's what Steve Harvey does. Knowing race, I'm hoping that it's like like a blend blend of like we're gonna get to the worst. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, I don't know, to be honest, race is kinda low key with his bronyism. He's actually more of a Disney fanatic more than he is a brony fanatic. Yeah, <laughs> specifically for Zootopia. Yes, oh, but, God, yes. but bronies are more controversial and thus oh. bigger views. Yep. Anyone see the uh, bronies react to um uh the Equestria Girls four movie? That was uh where they all dressed up in like costume? No. Well, a, a race was dressed up as Judy Hopps, and his girlfriend, no, I forgot her name, to- Doodles? Whatever his girlfriend, she dressed up as Maud. I gotta say, Fanny, your Maud is much better. Thank you, well, I'm proud to have a superior Maud cosplay. Well, duh. Anyway, and just her voice, too. Anyway, moving on with the news. In comic-related news, we have... My Little Pony Friends Forever, which for those of you who don't know, it's two ponies, one from the uh, main cast, one from the secondary cast, joining together for uh, one issue. It's the Rainbow Dash and Soren story. A.K.A. Best Ship Ever. Well, one yes. of them. Says you. There's an extended preview available. You get three pages worth of story, so you get to know what's going on. I mean, look at the cover of one of those versions. That's just, that's totally like, I bet I'm better in bed than you are. God, I'm supposed to be the shipper here. Huh, hey, really I was shipping just as long as you are. Anyway, uh, expect the issue to arrive in comic shops everywhere on January 25th, 2017 which is the same date as the uh, main comic book series, My Little Pony Friends Magic, with the uh, whole Discord and Accord thing going on. Which I really want to see! Anyway, speaking of books, for those of you who are fans of the Elements of Harmony book, apparently there is a sequel on the way. What, really? I'm going to quote the article here. <clears throat> Everything you need to know about the hit TV show My Little Pony Friends Magic. Character bios, episode guides, and maps are just the beginning. The second volume of the widely popular My Little Pony The Elements of Harmony French is Magic. <laughs> the illustrious fan burp, everypony! For those of you on the 8-bit channel, yes, this is where I do my gross, disgusting fan burp. Let's see if I can beat my record of how loud it is! The equivalent of a cock block, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, the official guidebook features seasons four through six highlights, of which include Princess Twilight Sparkle, The Castle of Friendship, The Defeat of Lord Tyrek, The Equestrian Games, and The Appearance of Starlight Glimmer, The Birth of Princess Flurryheart, and much more. So basically, it's like a part two. I guess the first book talked about seasons one through three, and this book will talk about seasons four through six. 
Okay. So, so of course you can pre-order that on Amazon for sixteen ninety-two. Well, it depends on who you ask, but uh, I don't know if anyone's really going to care too much about the birth of Flurry Hart. <laughs> Not really. I mean, I will, but you know, I think she's adorable. Anyway, I remember talking about this uh, earlier for the new year. Connect's pony lineup has been revealed. X has a thing set of ponies? Apparently, now. I heard that Lego has a pony set coming out. Yeah. They do. They do, oh, and they have the uh, videos on YouTube. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. How can Lego have the pony sets? They're not the same brand. Magic. That can they have uh, licensing they, permission? Exactly, yes. Well, because Hasbro has its own Lego competitor. You would think they would go through Hasbro's, but whatever. Okay. If Magic. it's popular enough... Hasbro will shell out the dough for the licensing to produce My Little Pony stuff. Yeah, I mean... I thought it was the way around. I mean, Lego Lego is like, you can't get any more popular than Lego. Even, and off-brand Legos just ain't gonna cut it. Yeah. Anyway. You have Twilight and Spike in the castle. You have Rarity staring into a mirror and wishing that she was more, even more beautiful than she already is. You have Rainbow Dash sitting on top of a thing. I guess it looks like a slide. You got Pinky in front of a thing and a bush. In front of a thing and a bush. Like, they try to make these look like houses, I guess. It's technically oh, super cute. Ah. You certainly have the map for description. I can't oh, help so it. Can it Smith. I can't help it. Connects doesn't... It Connects isn't Lego, okay? Like, you might as well have cardboard cutouts, okay? Oh, to be honest, I always found Connects far more fun than Legos. They were just more expensive, so my parents never got them. I don't know. These don't look all that great to me. They kind of look yeah. scary to me. Exactly. Like I said, cardboard cutout. Well, this is like... This is Connects for, like, really little kids. Like, the Connects stuff that I played with, it was, like, for 12s and ups, you know? Also, these look like bad CG. Okay. <laughs> Moving swiftly onwards, we got a new comic book series called Legends of Magic launching in April. Let's... I love I love the cover of the first one with Dash and the Indiana Jones hat, and they've got they've got like the hieroglyphs of the G one ponies. <laughs> yeah. That's just Nazis. Awesome. Let's see. Uh my Little Pony Legends of Magic is a tremendous opportunity for both. And a ring. Yeah, it's like... Why not? Ah, ah, here we go. The origins of cutie marks, friendships, magic, and more are available in this new ongoing series devoted to revealing the secret history of Equestria! No, wait, it's watch it not be canon in the least. Oh, wait, so is this comic going to say that cutie marks are an evolutionary trait of ponies that they didn't have originally? I yes. don't know, but... Oh, I might have to get this for Historical Equestria. Shamer's <clears throat> plug. Shamer's <clears throat> plug. Wait, that series is still going? Yeah, yes. I don't have the right to plug that for that. <clears throat> in the Go opening ahead, story arc, we travel back in time to uncover the secrets of Star Swirl the Bearded and his magical friends. Da -da -da. So yes, Something we get that more Star wrong. Swirl! Yes, all the Star Swirl except for on the actual show itself. God, guys, like I think like the fandom, like all ages of the fandom, have been begging the staff to make a Star Swirl episode. The best we've gotten of Star Swirl was in the Siren or Origin comics, where he was David Bowie, and in the Mirror Universe, where we saw him through flashback. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you know what I take before a Star Swirl? Exactly, I take a Celestia Luna yes. episode. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know. Considering Luna's, Luna's had a couple of like big standout things in the show. But we, we want some a... about the two of them when they were young. Yeah, well, I personally, I, would, I if I had an option, I would personally just take a Celestia episode, like just yeah, set I just want them to use them more and use it properly, like they can do. And Zai speaks. Yes. Sorry, I won't be able to get my dip. Anyway, Rarity, you wanted news about uh, season seven? Yes. You're not gonna like it. Message from Starfleet Captain. 
Uh, sorry, folks. I Writers I Kevin mean... Burke and Chris Doc Wyatt not returning for season seven. Okay, can you remind? Can Once you remind folks uh, who did the uh, w- what episodes they did? They were involved oh, in the, the times time they time. are a changeling. Oh, Viva Las Pegasus. That's a pretty good one. N P P O V. Any point of view? The, the uh, I need to watch that one again. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh... Yes, the Parks and Rec episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? I haven't watched that show yet. It's Not pretty damn good. Mind. In any case, apparently they are working on another project, so they are, are unfortunately not available for season seven. Meh. Oh, that does suck, but this show has seen writers come and go, and they've all proven mm. themselves, so... It has. It's, it's yeah. always nice to get new talent and to see people move, people move on to other things. Hmm. It sounds to me like the show's starting to lose steam, so... Well, well it is the eighth, but we are about to enter one of its lo- final seasons, sad as yeah. sad yeah. Late, as we are. Well, it depends. Well, again, it really greatly depends on what we consider final season. But this is the year for the movie, so there's a very good chance that this is this is going to be it, folks. Yeah, and which is all right with us. I mean, it's had a good run. Also, yeah. is it a movie? Also, guys, the fact that this is the year of the movie. All of the better talent is being used towards the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yay. So. Now, Again, fair enough. Take, up, take all with a grain of salt. Now, finally. Uh, the, for those of you who are fans of the comic book series, once again. Uh, remember issue 41, Rainbow Dash and the Very Bad Day? No. No. Well. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Who, who of you... Who uh, read the uh, Little Golden books back in the day, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, that takes me way back. I may have yes. read that comic trade, but which was... The, what happened? The wow, comic they, page... actually, they actually got this? Yes. For those who I mean, don't know, no. the, the original comic paid homage to the uh, Little Golden books by mimicking uh, the style, the writing, and even the, the little uh, golden... Uh, Trim around the, the around the back book. around the spine. Thank you. Yes. And now the actual comic book is being converted into a little golden book. <laughs> what was golden <laughs> that's, book that's awesome. Now, is right, this, right. is this to, explain to, to explain to someone who is from Britain who has not seen America's golden books, the golden books were essentially a various collection of different books written for kids that um, really catered to just about everything under the sun. They had Sesame Street-based ones, they had Disney-based ones, Mm. they had um, Bugs Bunny and other Warner Brothers cartoon-based ones. They were all really fun and all really cute. And you all Oh yeah, Berenstain Bears was especially prominent until they got their own book series. I had Leo the Lop and the ones involving Morgan the Unicorn. They even made a little golden book out of some nursery rhymes, like the little engine that could. Oh yeah. Yes. So okay. lots of people, uh, yeah, lots of kids in America grew up on little golden books, especially the, yeah. those of us born in the eighties. Hello. Mm-hmm. Okay, Hello. I I got my information uh, wrong, unfortunately. They aren't making uh, issue forty one a little golden book, but there is a listing on Amazon for My Little <laughs> Pony Little Golden Book and. My Little Pony, the movie, big golden book. A big golden book, huh? What? So the movie's getting turned into a golden book, huh? Uh-huh. That well, worries me. Other, I think than, it's... other than the fact that the books are being released on August 29th, there's no other information. None whatsoever. Not even a thumbnail. That's it for news. All right. Or Thank pony you for news, the please. pony news. Yeah. I've heard it DJing for 43 hours, 48 minutes, and 24 seconds. Yes, <laughs> that's almost six days. Shall we uh, move on to the next bit of business? Yes. Who has new business? Who has new business? That is now old business. On to new business. <laughs> I believe Fanny and I have semi new business. Technically, it's a week old, but... Have lots? Uh, it's because of Sunday. 
Our new business involves a certain consulting detective and his blogger. And no, they're not talking about me. No, we're not talking about what? Shirley and his pony version either. No, we're talking about BBC Sherlock and the recent wrap-up of Season 4. I saw it. Warning, hey. warning, warning, warning. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Major spoilers. If you have not seen it, either go to you, either, um, you'll either have to wait until the DVDs come out to buy them legally. Which is uh, what I have to do. Please. Or if you're wait Britain, until I PBS. Think you can still use the BBC iPlayer. Yeah, you could still use the BBC iPlayer if you're Depends from England. How the cut off day is. Or if you, uh, or wait until PBS re-releases the stream at a different time. Mm -hmm. As right, uh, because as of right now, all they have on their website is the last episode, which is kind of not going to help if you haven't seen the other two. Yeah, you'll be so lost. Which really stinks. How? However, if you have seen it, or if you don't care about spoilers, or you just want to hear the two of us rant about it anyway, you know, feel free to stay on and give it a, li and give it a listen, but there will be spoilers. Welcome to Rambles and Mumbles of a Couple of Nerds. And, Wait, you, and also, you, you as, an additional, as an additional warning, my opinion especially is going to differ from that of a lot of people in the family. I actually was curious, I never heard your opinion on the, the episode before that either. So I did want to hear your take on this. So. Yeah, yeah, like the whole of, it, yeah, my 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 opinion on the season as a whole is going to differ very strongly from that of the re rest of the fandom, or at least from a large majority. There are a few people who agree with me, mm -hmm. but um, one, they're not here right now, and two, uh, it would just take too long to mention everyone who agrees with this uh, standing. So just be forewarned: you're probably not gonna if you did not like the season. You're not gonna like me very much because, or me, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Wait, wait. Are you two going to be talking about that that scrawny that scrawny hack of an actor, Cumberbatch? Yes, we are, Sher uh, Sherlock Hooves. We are going to be talking about Cumberbatch. <laughs> Ugh, I keep getting compared to him all the time. Well, you do have similar style. Yes, you have yeah, messy I hair. You have can blue scars. How I I can actually explain how I deduce things. He's things. He just comes up with something out of his. He just pulls something out of his arse. Well, he he mostly does that because Mark Gatiss puts those words in his mouth. But still, oh, they come <laughs> out his ass. They just come out his ass. <laughs> <laughs> As for uh, but the thing is, but still, the point being is, uh, me and Trade, we like the fourth season. We're gonna, you know, try and be as succinct and quick as possible about we, explaining we why will admit. per episode. We will yeah. admit there are certain details that kind of got under our skin. Like Fanny, Fanny and I can both agree the first episode was kind of eh. enough with the fucking Saint Mary. I've yes. I'm, I've made this clear many times to my to my co-hosts as well as to friends. I hated their uh, the 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 powers that be or Moftis, however you want to refer to them. I've hated their choice from the beginning to make Mary Morstan an as a secret assassin. Yeah. It was a dumb departure and a dumb change from what she originally was, which was just as a very very clever, very very courageous. Teacher. She was a governess in the Doyle books, so, uh, she, and uh, it was her cleverness as well as her bravery that earned Holmes's respect and Watson's love. It wasn't because she was anything special or secret or some other uh, really stupid twist. And she certainly never once tried to kill Holmes. Yeah. She was just <laughs> a that, very clever woman. Imagine if, oh, good heavens, imagine if that actually happened with Trotson's Mary. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, for those of you who are not aware, Mary Morstan in the uh, BBC's Sherlock adaptation is part of a once uh, active organization called uh, Agro. Which consisted of her name plus the, of the first names of her fellow assassins. Once their group was compromised during a mission, they tried to get out but uh, or let themselves be killed, but she managed to get out alive, and she assumed she was the only one to make it. However, she later learned that not only was she not the only person within the group to survive that particular bad mission, but the dude was tricked into thinking she had be betrayed them. Thus, I wouldn't say tricked. I would say that he's a fucking idiot. 
Yeah, he made the wrong damn assumption, which also always happens when you have when there's already underlying uh, mistrust and conception. So obviously, this kid AJ, as he was called in the show, he already probably suspected or distrusted Mary and the rest of the group. So it wasn't too hard of a stretch for him, obviously, to assume when his torturer said the English woman did it. He automatically thought, oh, is that bitch? As a wise friend of mine once said, never assume. It makes an ass of you and me. And it certainly did him, and it got his ass shot up. Oh, he sounds but, like that a wasn't, but that wasn't the worst of it. The worst of the episode. The worst oh, of the episode. Was when they had her make a heroic sacrifice by jumping in front of a bullet for Sherlock. The woman who shot him! Last season now takes the damn bullet. I took oh, part of fuck! Even though, I, even though I don't, even though I'm not really a fan of the adaptation, I was quite perturbed at that exactly. shooting. Shooting. Yeah. What was the point? And worse, he was like, "Oh, trust her. She's a comrade in arms." Oh, she's fucking not. What? What are you planning? You have to be planning something. Apparently, he wasn't. He just really liked her. Apparently, thus. Wanted Watson to stay married. Anyway, I kind of her like, her, her quote unquote no, redemption and heroic sacrifice made her fucking sainted Mary. I don't know. It kind, of, it kind of felt like to me in the in the in the last season that he did. He said no, stay with her, mostly because he knew how much she meant to John. But the thing yeah. is, by the time John found out. He, she was dead to him. He was ready to pretty much dump her ass, baby or not. It was well, Sherlock's insistence that made him stay. Uh, poor, poor writing, then. Yeah, yeah. poor fuck ass writing. And, and it so gets it was even with the worse. First so it was with the first episode, the called the Six Thatchers. The 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 initial, the initial mystery of somebody breaking the six. Uh, Margaret Thatcher heads. That was actually really interesting. That was neat. That was a yeah. good way of interweaving the story. And I probably would have gotten behind the, the story about Mary a little bit more if they... Because this, admittedly by the Moftis, this was supposed to be all of season four, just Mary's story and that resolution. That was originally going to be all three episodes of season four, and then season five would be the rest that we see in the next two episodes, but- Which is kind of true, but kind of bullshit at the same time. So, but, but they did it because of Martin and Ben essentially being the two fucking hottest actors in Hollywood right now. <laughs> they really couldn't commit to that kind of thing. So they had to smush it. So anyway, here's, right. here's a big question, Fanny. Is is this it? Is BBC Sherlock done? I'm getting to that. It may not seem like it, but I'm getting to that. But yeah, the first episode was very much a strong miss, especially with the small side story of John being tempted to cheat on Mary and sort of cheating on her through a text affair with a random chick he met on the bus. Emotional but, cheating. But it was still, but still, it served a greater purpose as the, in the entirety of the whole season story arc, which we'll get yes. to. But I See, will, I will. Agree. It was a good way of uh, planting that seed, but it was still something. Al- it still and just out in the field. Yeah, it was out and left the field at the beginning, but in hindsight, I see how it served a purpose, and I'll explain that later. But yes. On to the next episode, which was the best of them, always the is. lying when, detective. Yes. When they do straight-up true adaptations of the stories, then the show really shines, and it's amazing. It was true with, um, it was true with The Great Game. It was true with The Hounds of Baskerville, and it's a special... It was also sort of true with, uh... Yeah, it was... Actually, you know what? It was mostly true with The Empty Hearse. Mostly true with The Empty Hearse. It was still one of the better of all the episodes of Season 3. But Season 3 was the weakest of them. But well, that, The Lying Detective. That sounds, allow like me. Very, that sounds like a very obvious title. Of course I lie. We always lie. Allow, but allow me to set the scene. We but come, yeah, The Lying Detective was the we best. We come a little bit after uh, Mary's been shot. John, of course, is pissed off because 
throughout uh, the sixth act, Sherlock's just like, I promise to protect you. I'm not going to keep that promise. <laughs> oh, shit. Plus, so, yeah, John John's didn't have pretty... a chance to confess his affair, so he's angry at himself, mostly. So, so yeah, so John... Kind of caused her to take that shot by aggravating the enemy, which is why he's like, you know, stop no, me next time. Oh, she word, jumped in front of the bullet. Because the bullet was meant for Sherlock, she drove in front. Yeah. Like, he, she didn't have to sacrifice herself, but he, it was still uh, his fault for antagonizing the enemy. And he did it on purpose, because he expected to die. He thought he was supposed to be dead. In any case, John's upset at Sherlock, doesn't want anything to do with him. And so, Sherlock is alone, and For not able drug? to solve as many mysteries. He's, yeah, he's going on a drug binge. He's yeah. on so this, much drugs. This recovering that addict, this recovering addict, now brought to one of the worst scenarios that he could ever face, pretty much goes into a full-on relapse. Yeah, he is so pumped up full of drugs that he can't keep up with his brain. Usually he and his brain are in perfect sync, but he can't he can't keep up. So he makes deductions and it's just like, no, get, get the fuck out of my face. And then suddenly, oh shit, that information was important. Yeah, it's like the information is a thing that he notices, but the c actual importance of it doesn't come up until later. It's delaying his reaction time, which is not good for this man. That sounds like something that happens to Mycroft on a cake binge. I beg your pardon. Do not interrupt them, please. Ah, speaking of uh, Mycroft, Mycroft is, of course, extremely worried about Sherlock, so much so that he has a fucking helicopter at his disposal, waiting and to fucking observe him. It seems in any out, universe, in any lifetime, whomever I am or what I am, I am always worried about my baby brother. Yes, yeah, so you have a helicopter yes. tracing his every move so that no, you can see that his no, walking pattern is spelling, spelling the words piss off. No, she does not have the helicopter. She 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 can she can request the use of some of the wonder bolts. She and has case. the entire organization. But of yes, that. essentially Sherlock's gone off the fucking rails and everyone is worried sick except John, who's mostly just being a little asshole about everything. He's in, in, and he's losing his own mind as he keeps having hallucinations of his dead wife essentially telling him shit he already knows. She yep. keeps she keeps giving him the advice he needs to listen to. He has to move on. He has to be strong. He's got to go to Sherlock and make up. He's got to get his shit together. And he won't listen. Because if he not. does that he loses even this version of Mary. And he's also the most emotionally constipated character ever written. But we always knew this. Watchers of this show have always known this fact. So we're not surprised, but we're hoping he'll get through it. And they're it sort of forced to do it when Sherlock is approached by Miss Smith. See, Miss Smith's father is the infamous reality show host, Col for Culverton Smith, is a sort of a parody of Gordon Ramsay. He goes to restaurants and other businesses, points out their flaws, and either helps them rebuild and, can, and regain their uh, their reputation, or completely destroys them. Hence, he's called the business killer. But Sherlock has made a somewhat abs uh, an apparently absurd deduction that not only is Culverton a business killer. He's a serial killer. As Miss Smith, the daughter, said to uh, approaches Sherlock, she tells him a very interesting story. That one day, she and various friends and business associates were gathered to her father's office for and put under some very interesting drugs. Drugs that mud muddle your memory. Called bliss. Because ignorance is bliss. Essentially, he drugs them up and tells them, in a few minutes, you're going to forget, I said a fucking thing. But here goes. And he tells them all, apparently, that he has the need to kill. But Miss Smith cannot remember the name of the person her father wants to murder. It isn't until Sherlock figures it out that it, he just wants to kill anybody. Just anybody. So just he makes the accusation on, on the fucking internet. Because that's a smart idea. 
And we'll John is pulled in to help him solve the case. But it seems, at every turn, that Sherlock may have hallucinated the whole thing. Because when he meets with Miss Smith, again, it's a different woman who he's never met before. And everything Culverton does, though creepy, does not immediately make him a killer. No, An asshole, that. but not a killer. Yeah, in fact, when they first meet up, he goes to a fucking, uh, like, a Hollywood set. And it's just like, you know I'm a killer, but did you know that I'm a serial killer? Like, and he's filming a commercial. <laughs> Worst, most corny advert ever, but it w was effective, apparently. It's like so, if fucking so, Sans from Undertale was doing a serial commercial. So, wait, this man is supposed to be my human equivalent. Yes. I am so sorry. Oh, but here's the thing. Sherlock finally go. he finally snaps, grabs a scalpel, and starts waving it around like him uh, like a freaking madman which at this point he is and john at that moment after all of his traumas finally snaps and beats the shit out of him this of course all leads to everyone not believing sherlock sherlock being put in the hospital that culverton helped build and um technically owns and it takes a while for john to realize a whole bunch of shit as well as Sherlock to realize a bunch of shit. And ultimately, here's the point. Culverton took a lot of cues from H.H. H. Holmes, the creator of the murder castle, and made himself a murder hospital. Yeah. So he was a killer all along. And for those of you who don't know, H.H. H. Holmes is probably one of the most fascinating serial killers in American history. And possibly one of, I think, the first as well, wasn't he? Oh, One the of the report. earliest killer uh, killers in America, H.H. H. Holmes, built a hotel during the World's Fair and killed people in it because he just wanted to. And he was able to get away with it for ages because he had every room and a section of the hotel built by different architects. He'd have them build a, a portion, fire them, and get more. Also, he could craftily and easily dispose of bodies. Which he... Which he dissolved into the skeletons and sold those to medical schools. Culverton does the same thing. He builds a hospital, has each wing created specifically to his design, fires architects, and then gets new ones to finish it off. And now he has multiple secret passages so he can keep the patients in there. And who's the wiser if somebody else dies in a hospital? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of... Uh little sidetrack here. I'm a fan of uh, Transformers more than meets the eye. During like the fourth or fifth issues, there's this doctor called uh, Pharma. And he pretty much does the exact same thing. He has patience and uh, he's, ha he's <clears throat> sorry. There's a specific part of uh, Transformers an an anime called the Transformation Cog. He's supplying them to uh, a Decepticon who would otherwise kill everybody. So, yeah, he's killing patients to harvest organs. So, yeah, similar concepts, and they're all done very well. But um, the best part is, the best part of the whole thing is, John figures it out only after he finally sees uh, a very infamous videotape that his own dead wife made, telling Sherlock, yeah, essentially, you know, John is shit at being a person unless you make him a hero. So put yourself in danger, and he'll come and get you. Which is what Sherlock did. Just like in the story The Dying Detective, of which this is an adaptation, Holmes has decided to poison himself to the point where he is, yes, completely dying. He is slowly dying. Watson can save him, but only under duress. And he won't let him save him until the right moment. Which is what happens. After Culverton finally confesses his crimes, John gets his ass to the hospital. Especially after he's warned people, you know, yeah, Sherlock was right and we're all fucking idiots. Anyway, John no, that's, saves that's, the day. That's yeah, John saves the day. Sherlock is saved from dying from, drug, uh, from his drug overdosage. And all is set to right. 
John has his baby, he has his best friend, everything's good. So he tells his therapist, who was introduced at the beginning of the episode, is a very, very nice lady. Now, I gotta ask, is, Until, the same, is it the same woman from the origin, from the first series? No, no, completely different woman. However, John's world is thrown into another loop because the therapist, as it turns out, is not really his therapist. She's not a therapist at all. No, but she a body double? No degrees. Nope. In fact, because someone... earlier in the episode, John deduces that the Holmeses, yes, John deduces from my cross behavior, that the Holmeses have a third sibling. And he it's assumed. Like one line that Mycroft said that kind of gave it away. Yeah, yes. Mycroft says a line that gives away that they have a third sibling. However, John assumes it's a brother, just as Sherlock assumed in the first episode that John had a brother. But as we all know, it's always something. It's not a brother. It's a sister. Yoros Holmes. Yes. Oh, I was about to say, oh god, not another Sheringford. Nope. Well, Yoros. interesting. Interesting thing that you say Sheringford, because... That's the name of the prison that was built to hold her. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. My god, we have to tell her this. <laughs> we must tell our own sister this. This is delightful. Oh, you're gonna yes. love this, then. So, yes. The this third, leads the us third and final episode, the final this, problem. This leads us fully to the final problem. We'll try to keep this as brief as possible, as we've been droning on so long already. Yep. Okay, and you uh, as we said, the line, as we said, the lying detective is the best of the of them because they do go into a proper adaptation with the with the villain Culverton Smith. They go into a full adaptation with uh, Holmes dying, with Watson protect, uh, having to keep himself from saving uh, his uh, uh, his friend, and eventually, eventually do, being able to do so once the case has been solved. But most importantly, with the lying detective in the new version, we finally get some final closure before the big reveal. John and Sherlock have another conversation alone together. John finally admits his infidelity. Emotional, yes, not physical, but still, he does. We get confirmation that Sherlock is still talking to Irene Adler. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm amazed he's just still she, talking. Well, she texts him. He doesn't text back. He, uh, so he claims. Yes, yeah, so yes, he we claims. Get, we get claims that he says he's only te it's only through text. He rarely texts her back. But they still talk. John gets through the biggest part of grief. They finally get some of that emotional constipation out of their blood, and they hug. Oh God, their hug! <laughs> it made my like John Locke shipping heart sore, because not only do they finally hug, but Sherlock rests his head on John's hair. Fanny, <laughs> so happy. Fanny, yes. I'm still shocked at your words. Emotional constipation. Well, that's what we say because they don't fucking talk about their feelings. It's because they're so, British. Could British you say that? At this point, they do. They do. So, not to. So, what do you call that then? Emotional to, vomit? No. Well, not an to rain on your. Yeah, there you go. It's an emotional release. But anyway, the final problem, yes. Basically, after scaring the shit out of Mycroft, Sherlock and John finally at Mycroft finally admit, yes, there is a third sibling, one that Sherlock forgot. Yes, apparently his, he, he had no memory. Or a I wish. The sibling. I wish I could forget my third sibling. But here's the reason why he forgot her. She killed Brad. Only for members of his own. She was one. She was emotionally, a so she was a true sociopath. She the was the smartest a, of the home siblings. She was a genius, but, and and a horrifying one at that. No empathy, no sympathy, no emotion. She was like a super super villain level genius. Yeah, like, exactly. Sherlock and Mycroft were like squabbling little toddlers. She and she, really at one creepy. point, yes, and at one point, she did, uh, it's at first seemingly out of jealousy, um, towards Sherlock, murdered Redbeard. She killed Redbeard, leading him to a drowning, and they could never find the body. 
Unable to get past this uh, emotional trauma, Sherlock completely erased the memory of it, including his memory of her. Particularly after she was taken away, and she was taken away I just, I because just she didn't over. just she didn't just kill Redbeard. She burned down their house. Yeah, so she was taken to Sheringford, where she was supposedly kept locked no, up, nice and safe. She, but... First, she was kept off, lo uh, kept locked up by their uncle Rudy, who was apparently the proto Mycroft. But Zai. I was just gonna say, I, I just love when they're, they're like, well, did you ever find him? And then Mycroft's just like, well, just after that she started calling him Drowned Redbeard, so he made our assumptions, like, oh my god. It's like, yes, that was just horrifying. Well, she, dr she drowned, she drowned that Sherlock's dog. My, oh, that, my that, eldest, sure. my eldest sister sure. tried, actually Surely. tried to kill Mr. Me. Hooves, Mr. Hooves, it gets worse, but we'll, we'll get to that the reveal soon. Yes. Anyway, sh oh, yes, you little Sherlock, me? he blocked everything out. And that's why he was the alone protects me, and I've never had friends when John ben eventually met him. He never allowed himself to have them, because look what happened. So, well, yeah, yeah, they go to they go to Sharonford in order to find out how the hell she got out, and what's going on. Well, turns out the, the, uh, the patient was running the asylum. Yes, much she like managed... the Joker in Arkham Asylum, she managed to reprogram every guard and prison official in the place. To do her bidding. Just through talking to them. Not yeah. only that, but she was in league with Moriarty. Exactly. With just five five years prior to this to these events, she got uh, uh, Mycroft gave her what he calls treats. Her treat for that year, for Christmas, was to speak for five minutes, unobserved, unwatched, with Moriarty. During the high total of five minutes, she managed to get him to help record vo uh, audio, video, and create an elaborate, elaborate, sto um, uh, um, really, it's let's just call it puzzle. Yeah, Saw-esque puzzle, which I actually liked because I'm a Saw f f fiend. Um, Meh. And I find the story extremely gothic. But yeah, they she she builds this lovely little gauntlet of the for them to, for Sherlock, John, and Mycroft to run, all for the sake of an experiment, and that's what she's calling it the whole time. It's an experiment mm -hmm. for Sherlock. Not only do they have to run a gauntlet, but there's suppose there's also several lives at stake, including that of a little girl up on a plane, the only one awake on a plane full of sleeping people, and they have to save her as well as get out of the damn pl uh, 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 appease uh, uh, Euros and get out of the damn uh, asylum. However, it doesn't quite work because no. when they get to the final stage, or what she calls the final stage. Uh, she tells them, all right, you've got to kill either John Watson or Mycroft, because only two people can go forward from here. Mycroft, of course, tries to, uh, uh, tries to make it easier for Sherlock to kill him by essentially belittling John. Sherlock takes a third option and tries to blow his own head off. Yeah. And Euros decides, no, that's not what I want, and knocks him out. Cut to the old ho uh, the old Holmes, Holmes house. Musgrave Sh Hall. Sherlock is alone. John is in the well. Euros is in the home via television taunting him. And, and we get the big reveal of who and what Redbeard actually is. Seems Redbeard wasn't Sherlock's dog because their father was allergic. Redbeard was Victor Trevor's. Sherlock's best friend. Another little boy. And Yoros drowned him, not because she was jealous of Sherlock, she was jealous for him. She wanted to play with her little brother. She wanted to join in the fun. So she made a game. And Sherlock was too stupid to figure it out. So, she yeah. just wanted her little brother to love her. I can't tell if this is worse or better than my showing So I yeah. don't want to know. So yeah, a little Sherlock boy... Dead in a well. 
at the same well John is about to drown in. Oh. But Maybe Sherlock sure, finally... But Sherlock finally figures out the, the what happened. He finally riddles out his sister's song, which told him exactly what to do to say uh, to, uh, to save the, uh, the person in the well, which was fucking spend time with your sister. <laughs> yeah, because it turns out the little girl on the plane was actually Euros locked in a room in her own mind palace, which she forcibly shut herself in. You know what I thought was going to happen with that? What? I, I was so prepared that to find that that was a recording from something that had already happened, but she, but Sharon Ford had just, like, so geniusly protect, predicted the algorithm of how people would respond in conversation that it all matched up. I know, like that. that would have been neat too, but this... Again, my, my opinion is going to make a lot of people angry. I loved this episode. I Me thought too. it made perfect sense. I thought... Me and too. turns out... Yoros wasn't just doing this. She, she wasn't just the ther the therapist. She was also the chick on the bus who tried to get John to have an affair. She did that in order to learn more about John Watson, about her brother's favored playmate. It's the same it's thing as what she did before. And it's so beautifully, uh, as a fan of gothic novels, it was perfectly gothic in its complete makeup from the isolated island um, prison slash asylum to the burned decrepit old family home to the ingenues in distress because she we not get we don't just get one ingenue in distress the form of John we also get another one in one of Euros's little traps uh, scenarios where she makes Sherlock tell Molly Hooper. I love you, so that Molly can say it to him. She tells Sherlock that Molly's in danger. She expects him to figure out that there's no actual bombs in her apartment and he doesn't have to go through with it, but he does it anyway. Emotional pain. Yeah, and it turns out that that scene wasn't going to happen. It turns out that originally it was there was a scene that everybody hated in place of that. And Mark and, Mark and Stephen kind of analyzed what everybody was saying and looked at the scene and just go, alright, everybody's saying this scene is shit. So let's just do, know, well, let's just do it like this. Scene? Unfortunately, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do some great We research. need to find out what the original scene was, but yeah, the scene we the scene we got was to, was Yoros trying to show Sherlock you know, emotions make you weak and stupid and you should just not have them. But again, this was all also because Again, the tra uh, the the traps, the whole scenario. It was her playing with her brother. She was trying to play with her favorite brother. All she wanted was his attention. All she wanted was his love. Hence, why she tried to be a pirate, kidnapped Redbeard, and tried to give Sherlock a puzzle to figure out where he was. That's the buried treasure. She's trying to play your game, and she went too damn far. Same thing with this particular scenario. First, she shows up disguised as Culverton Smith's daughter and gives him the clues to figure out what the man is. First, she appeared as the victim because Sherlock likes ha helping people, particularly people who are blonde and using canes to walk on bad legs. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Mm -hmm. But he also seems to respond well to extremely smart villains. Hence why she went to Moriarty. Hence why she made the gauntlet. It's her attempting to play with her brother because of her uh, obsession. Which, again, is a very gothic theme. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved every moment. And I especially loved the final portion of the, mo of the episode because after everyone after John is saved because Sherlock appeals to his sister and begs her to help him save John. And she does. And she goes back to Sharonford willingly. Afterwards, John moves back into 221B with his baby. They rebuild because at one point, the flat's blown up. Yeah, kind of a patience grenade was put mm. in there. But yeah, they rebuild. They move Again. back in. 
and it was it was wonderful. It was a good because, ending, honestly. But to be honest, I, to be honest, I was. I don't know if again. I don't know if I'm grateful. My sis, my eldest sister, only tried to just kill me. No, brother mine. She just tried to throw you in the rubbish. Like I would have survived the night if you didn't stop. <laughs> in, in any case, Euros has reverted back to being semi comatose. She just kind of sits in her cell, except Until, when except Sherlock shows up. Apparently, she taught him to play the violin, so he comes and make, help lets her gets her to play with him. Oh, I love that the whole strategy no thing was involved because that was no like our, that was our first episode. I know, right? Zai, it was like very. It was a very sweet yeah. thing, but it's also he's managed to connect with her. He managed to give her what she wanted, but in a non-destructive way by playing the violin with her, and it was very lovely, and it's shown how much he's grown. And then, of course, we get scenes of them being of John and Sherlock being domestic and raising Rosie together like two dads. It makes me so happy. The shipping. And of course, we get a final word from this tainted Mary when another DVD shows up called Miss You. And she says, these are her words, my John Locke conspirators. When I'm gone, I know exactly what you will become. Hence, the writers are saying, yes, we know! We know they're a couple! We know they're in love! Fine! Have it! Thank you! So we finally get that mini uh, uh, quiet confirmation, but we also, of course, get a nice little wrap-up in it, in that message, to allow for two possible scenarios. One, this is the very last of BBC Sherlock. It is the end, and we will not get another. Uh, maybe someday the two will reprise their roles as old men and we'll get to see the retirement stories adapted. Yes. But there's that, that nice. possibility. But we also have it an open-ended enough that we could get a fifth series in just a few years when these two yeah. have a slight, you know, quiet spell in their busy schedule. So we have the open... Well, it's open. It's open to a fifth series. It's, it's open point, to yeah. a reboot later on. It's satisfying enough to definitely be an ending in itself, but you're right, it is open-ended enough that it, they could bring it back easily without being like, oh, well, it clearly wrapped up and it's not possible to continue, you know? Because exactly. sometimes some series do that, and then when they want to bring it back, they have to struggle to kind of work out how that's possible. Yeah, but, they have to go and yeah. retcon yeah. it or do something about it, but this time we don't, because it's got that perfect open ending that it can work as both. Zai, as a British person, obviously liked it. <laughs> like, granted, the episode is called The Final Problem, but Fanny does have a point. There is enough open-endedness for either the series to actually continue or for hungry fanfic writers to do the jump with it. Exactly, which is, and again, this is why they gave us, why, as I look through the whole, especially after The Lying Detective and through this episode, why... Even though fans are complaining, we don't know if John and Sherlock are together. You're, they're totally homophobic and not together. Is what we do. no? They told us. Mary told us. Yes, this is what they are. We know what they're going to become. Now it's our turn to take that and do with it as we will, because they subtly have said, "Yes, they're together. Yes, they are a thing." Isn't that what? Arthur Conan Doyle to want to do with Sherlock. It's, exactly. It's two men in an apartment with a baby. Two no. idiots and a baby. They exactly. Get, Can they afford a, a baby? Well, you could get a third if you want my crop involved. No. 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 He, I can't he see my crop changing no, diapers. He has no. He has no reason to be there helping ro raise Rosie Watson. Uh uh. Yes, Kitty. What? What you do is you get Tom Selleck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, two men and a baby. Two idiots yeah. and a baby. And with that, uh, our yes, overall, sure. yes. yes, overall, I loved, overall, the first episode notwithstanding, I love the series, I love the crop breadcrumbs planted, I love the gothic turn it took, the return to the gothic roots that the third one did. Yes, I love Euros Holmes. I love that mad woman is locked in her attic. I adore Woo! her. 
And I'm not gonna lie to you, because I love Crimson Peak so much, if they had gone the full incest route instead of just the, <gasps> um, brother complex obsession, but, <laughs> well, you know, the toned down version that we got, I would have been still just as happy. And it still would have been canon enough for me. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. I loved the lying detective. The first one could have been better, but you know, they're not all gems. It was just an offshoot of the shit that was season three. Yeah. So yeah, I loved it. Trade? I will agree, Fanny. The first episode, while I did initially enjoy it when it really sunk in for me, uh, the whole Mary thing kind of left a foul taste in my mouth. Not to say that I didn't enjoy the episode. I love the mystery. I love, I love all the Sherlock. Movies, even the ones in the subpar episodes. I love the mysteries because you want to see how seemingly unrelated scenarios can work together. I love the second episode because it showed Sherlock in the darkest place possible, and we got hints and whispers of that in prior episodes, but we never saw Sherlock like fully in in a dark place. And then the third episode comes around and. While, yes, you do have to perform some mental gymnastics to get your head wrapped around the ending, it's an enjoyable one nonetheless. Well, that was an interesting discussion. That took an hour. Let's yeah, do music a break, guys. I'm sorry it took yeah. an hour. Yeah, um, it's fine. Thank, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for dealing with it. Thank you for dealing with it. All right. We'll be I'm right sorry. back after this music break, guys. Stay tuned. Mm. And we're back. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to continue this onslaught of nerdiness. Indeed, that. Yes. Briefly, um, yes. briefly, a return to uh, MLP. Um, I recently found out the uh, plushie maker known as uh, who are they? Yes, known as Firefly Twinkle Toes. Oh, is selling uh, mini plushes that she's made of various ponies, including all of the pies except for Pinky, Doctor Fury, made, made a and Pinky already, she? she made a Pinky, but it's not part of the set that she's selling. She has she made has Igneous, one. Cloudy Quartz, Limestone, Marble, and Mod, but she is also selling her Doctor Hooves and Derpy Hooves mini plushes. They are one hundred and ten dollars minimum. Shipping for one app, which is cheap for minis. Pre made. Even, I mean, they're really, really good. Don't get me wrong. It's just, oh my god, the price. Again, cheaper than what most people would do. Mm, but she's but, like, plus, she's she's a pro, a pro at this. Um, with $10, $10 yeah. uh, shipping in America and 15 overseas. Story they're really six inches to get tall, made of minky, and they're just so perfect. I want mod more than anything, but I, until I get my I'll rent take paid, marble. Until I get my rent paid, I can't afford anything. So if any of you out there uh, who are loyal listeners who are fans um, and have buy it for me <laughs> and have money want to buy it for me, I will gladly will message you uh, at some point and give and you my address. <laughs> No, I'm ki- I kid, I kid. But no, so let's like, join a contest. Whoever love... donates the most to get fangirl plushie gets a free picture from me. Uh, so, seriously hey. though, if you can afford these and you love p- ponies and you love plushes of ponies, especially ones that aren't on the market right now, in any format, get them, get them, support this plush maker, enjoy yourselves, be happy. Mm-hmm. Hey, I gotta ask, Mod, how do you feel about being turned into a plush? I want a pinky plush, <laughs> and, I want, and I want some pony to make the boulder. Hey, Maud? Yes? I wouldn't imagine you'd be into plushes. I have several plush rocks. Oh. I thought they would be plushes made out of rock. No. I think it is. Does, They're not quite as soft. Does boulder have a plush collection? Yes. What's his, what's his favorite? Mr. Bun Bun. <laughs> I don't want to anyway. know. Anyway. So, switching gears completely again. 
Um, I have I decided that I think a good conversation that we could talk about is would be um, comic book adaptations to the large and small screen and how <coughs> how so many of them seem to be fucking it up. Yeah. Let's be honest here, everyone. Marvel set the bar really damn high. Yeah, and they well, didn't start there. They did not start there. No, they actually started quite at the bottom of the barrel. And then yeah. when they realized if we stop focusing on the oh my god superhero part and just focus on the oh my god people part. Well, to be better. honest, to be honest, I really think it didn't. Marvel did start out kind of low, but I think even the worst of the Marvel adaptations Hulk. <laughs> is, Hulk. Better, is better than some of the DC adaptations that came out. I mean, yeah. does, anyone, oh, huh. does anyone even want and to yet? mention... Does anyone even want to mention Steel? Uh, no. But here's the thing, though. Technically, DC had the earlier movie adaptations. Like, the first Superman with um, Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve. And the first Batman movie with like Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah, they were. That's they really were. They, but unfortunately, they did. that's because they, they just knew. went downhill really quick. They, Even earlier, well, if you want to count the uh, serials and such. But the now, we're talking movies, when they though. first when the when the movies first started, uh, at least with the first Superman and Superman Two, they were paying attention to the idea of store nar- of narration and storytelling, focusing on the aspect of the human being and the people rather than just the let's just make it cool and over the top. Yeah, they say they Superman that for, and Superman Four were kind of shit. Yeah, they say they saved that kind of stuff when Schumacher took over for Batman. Yeah, uh, as far as even with even with Tim Burton's vision on Batman, at least it still focused more on the narrative and on Bruce's, you know, juggling of being Batman and. Well, no. mm-hmm. Batman, Batman Returns did the one did something that I never up to that point I never did for the comics. It made me feel sorry for the Penguin. Yes, because again, it focused on people. They they, they focused on the people before the the hero or the villain aspect. Although it was already starting to turn towards a more cartoony era, but it still had more things good about it than bad at that point. Yes. And then Schumacher and the no, no, rise of the, of the schlock. No, the only no, good no, thing no, about Batman on. Forever, the music. <laughs> no, 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 hold on. Baby! I... <laughs> hey, I have that CD. Hey. Let, tra- let trademark, let trademark speak. Yes. Now, I will admit, Batman Forever, not a great Batman movie. To me, it's though, either. it's good. It's a guilty pleasure. It, it's a popcorn. Movie. It's a guilty pleasure. I love Jim Carrey as the Riddler, even though it's not the best interpretation as the Riddler. But I still love it. The only thing I can't get behind is Tommy Lee Jones' interpretation too. I don't know. I like. It was fun watching Tommy do Two Face. You know who I actually couldn't stand in that movie? Being Val Kilmer. Yeah. But the thing is, why? Why did it have to be Tommy Lee Jones? Why couldn't we have gotten Buddy D. Williams back for it? Why yeah, couldn't, I know. He, why why couldn't they have just now. why couldn't they have just cast another black man? Yeah, it was already established in the actual in, you know, the first Batman that fucking Harvey Dent in this universe is black. Yeah. yeah. They we, chose to blatantly ignore their own canon, basically. And here's the thing that just gets me to no end. When Batman Forever came out, I was thirteen years old. And I remember this specifically because I was like this is rated PG-13. I'm 13. I can go see it without my parents. I, it was a big deal for me. So I went to watch it, and then when I saw Harvey Dent as a white guy, I was like, wait a minute. He was black in the last movies. He was Lando Calrissian. What happened to Lando? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, wait a minute. Even to a 13-year-old brain, I was like, why didn't they just get the same guy? Mm-hmm. So exactly. anyway, well, probably it wasn't because like he it. was an actor of taste, and he went, "I'm not acting in that shit." Well, actually, yeah. I gotta I, make, I gotta make some more Colt 45 commercials. <laughs> I actually I like, I actually, I, from what I understand, I don't even think they approached Billy D. Williams. They probably didn't. They probably all, just thought, you know, hey, let's just get somebody. Well, right, they were right. on the hype train at that point. How about we talk about an? A superhero movie that essentially paved the way for Marvel's good movies. 
Well, first Blade. trade, real quick. Real quick. Blade. Yeah, Blade. we're kind of skipping over uh, the element in the room, or in this case, the ice cold Austrian in the room. Uh, oh my god. Let's just let's just say this. Let's just say this about Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin really wasn't a movie. It was just a live action feature length adaptation of the uh, Adam West series. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Adam no. West series had charm. This had nothing. No, no, sure. No, you want to know, you guys want to know what Batman and Robin was? Shit. It was a feature length toy commercial. Yep. Yeah. Literally a toy commercial. And even the even actors say, even the, to- even the actors say, I felt like I was in a toy commercial. And the toys had to have bat nipples too? Sure, Let's not discuss the bat nipples or the fucking bat friend. Actually, you know what I found so funny about Batman and Robin? That they insisted on bat nipples for Batman and Robin, but Barbara None. didn't get anything. But I'm sorry, she will never be Barbara Gordon to me. She will never be Batgirl. But yes, she was Barbara Gordon. She was Alfred's niece, Barbara. That's right. George she was Lillian. bullshit character number whatever, and she's not Batgirl. No, yeah. she's not. But let's, wait, wait, let's squirrel, move, squirrel. Let's skip and move on to the yes. No, the no, no. Let's let's it. let the rodent talk first. Oh, George, what did what? George Clooney keeps a picture of himself in that Batman costume to remind himself about Never how again. shitty. Yeah. Never again. Never again. Remember, Remember George Clooney again. was terrible as Batman. Like he could pull Bruce Wayne off well, but he's not the same Batman. fucking character when he's in the bat suit. He doesn't change his voice. He doesn't try to do anything. I agree. Well, I, don't think, bat- I don't think Schumacher actually told him to do anything. But well, most of them, God even sakes. Val Kilmer at least knew enough to try and disguise his voice a little bit when he was in the Batman costume. Yeah, even when, when, even when Val Kilmer said shit lines like, car, chicks, chicks did, the, did the car. Like, <laughs> even, still... even stupid lines like that, he still did his Batman voice. No, George Clooney pops on and said, I freeze. I'm Batman. No. Oh. Anyway, anyway. Bad clue. <laughs> but yeah, moving moving but on from these. Eventually, eventually, Blade appeared, and Blade yes. was the beginning of Marvel's, you know, let's get some good movies going. Sort of I'd thing. actually like to say that Blade is probably the beginning of the resurgence of good comic book movies again. Yes. yes. And unfortunately, the original set of comic book movies was very short-lived. We're talking like Superman 1 and 2, Batman 1 and 2. Oh, I've got a couple that people probably don't really remember. First of all, this one is actually pretty mainstream, Dick Tracy. Dick yes. Tracy, yes. Oh, man. Dick Tracy, oh, uh, give me some of that. That was a and, Disney movie. And that actually, I, just, was still I good. still don't think that was that bad. And say what you will, Madonna kind of was made for that role, or that oh, role was really, made for her. Really yes. And then here's one I doubt, and I wonder if anyone else here has seen this one. Tank Girl! Oh, yes. oh come on, that movie was shit! That movie that was, was terrible! terrible. Shame oh, on you that movie that to off. me is entertaining shit. I laugh my ass There's off at that There's a difference movie. between a bad shit that takes itself seriously and Ten. bad shit that knows it's shit but still has fun. At least exactly. with the ones no, at least with the ones like Tank Girl that know uh, that has fun with what they are. The kangaroo people. Yes, yes. You're, you folks are talking about a movie with Malcolm McDowell with a holographic head and fucking kangaroo people. Correction. Uh, seriously, sex seriously, with kangaroo people. For me, it's really hard to determine what was a worse like um, not mainstream like um, subculture comic book movie, Tank Girl or the original Dread. However, uh, you're all also forgetting yeah, something was that was TV part now. of my childhood that I enjoyed and still enjoy, even though it's fucking weird as hell. Howard the Duck! Oh, <laughs> oh god! Just oh, get out! No, oh, just leave! Just get out! Just get out now! <laughs> ah, the duck pornography bags! Can I say it yeah, now? Can I, can I, can I, can I? Yeah, <laughs> say it. Go on. We're all gonna say it. Duck tits. Woo. <laughs> and, actually, and actually, you know what's really funny? You know what's really funny, guys? That was one of the first Marvel comic book adaptations ever. Uh-huh. Yes, it was, and I loved it, man. Because so many people don't realize this. Howard the Duck is a Marvel comic thing. That's why he actually he became... 
In the comics, oh, he oh. became one of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, yeah, that's why no, he that's the, the, the first Guardians yes. of the Galaxy. <laughs> that was Howard the Duck. How many people actually know that? Oh my yes. God. But but basically, let's. But yes, Blade was the forerunner to to bring. Good. To bring good movie. Oh, yeah. Miss Rarity says we missed something. God. How about the How about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. The first The first one was all right. The second. Yes. One, eh. The third one. The third one was, holy shit! The third one's good to watch when you want to make fun of stuff. Yes. Yeah, especially when he Again, these were movies that were good the, either the first or second films because really that's when they really got the thing. But those movies were based more on the cartoon show, not on the actual Turtles comic. The comic itself was really dark and really gritty and really kind of freaky. Well, yeah. made it more kid friendly and made it more accessible. It having it actually sells stuff. Having actually seen. Uh, Link Carter's review of the original first Turtles comic. Yeah, it eventually got dark and gritty, but initially it wasn't as dark as you're thinking. Still, it just it was a very turn that thing. way. Yes. But yeah, Turtles was kind of a, one of the early forerunners of comic stuff, adaptations. Yes. And speaking <laughs> as someone who watched the original cartoon series and yes. all the latest adapt adaptations of cartoons that have come out, I don't count the live action TV series. That was shit. Um, Neither do I. I liked the 2008 series a lot. I thought it was really good. And I actually like the new iteration now, too. I haven't seen anything really, really new, like some of the other stuff that they're doing. But uh, what at least the first season of the new CG series, I kind of enjoyed. That's I could the even. One, that's the one where. Um, that's the one where uh, April is like fifteen years old. April's right? a teenager. They are actually teenage to me, Ninja Turtles. Yep. And... Raphael is Donatello for some reason. No. <laughs> no. Oh, Ron, you mean voice wise? Yes. Ron yeah. Paulson. Ron Paulson. Ron Paulson. Yeah. Ron Paulson becoming Donnie is great because he does capture the Donnie feel, but gives him a, yeah. his own version. Just as I will never, 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 never trade up the, the awesomeness of hearing Sean Astin as freaking Raphael. Anyway. <laughs> I love no. Ray. Mo moving on, moving on. Blade, I, let's get back to it. Blade was a great forerunner, at least the first movie. The second movie was, what well, the fuck? They all kind of went more. a little bit downhill as they went on and on. Yeah. But at the same they time... Out, they hadn't yet figured out how to make a sequel just as entertaining as the first. Yeah, yeah. because the mind. antagonists in each sequen, uh, success and fill was just... It was the antagonist, I feel, that was the weakest link in all of those. Yeah. yeah. But the third one, mind. no one liked, mind. but I love it just because it's just batshit insane. Yeah. <laughs> There's time <laughs> travel, it's samurai, it's and what the fuck. No, wait, I'm talking about Blade, Blade, not Turtles. Not Turtles. Blade. Uh, yeah, especially when when you realize that Ryan Reynolds was in the third one. Yeah. yeah. It, would have been, it would have made as much sense if they had just made him Deadpool back then. I know, yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much. But they played essentially the same kind of character. I'm actually mm -hmm. kind of I'm actually kind of surprised that um, that Deadpool didn't make a Blade reference in his movie. Anyway, anyway, um, he probably did, and we just didn't notice. But um, keep in mind, Blade Blade was a massive success. It was a massive risk too, because what because what came right before Blade, just a few years before, was Steel, the movie that nearly killed oh, the comic God. book movie adaptation oh. industry. Oh. Thank you so this? much, Shaquille O'Neal. You should never have taken that role. Well, to be honest, Steel is kind of a... He's a good superhero. I love Steel, but he's kind of... He's not mainstream, and at least in the comic book world. When you talk about yeah. to people who aren't comic book nut fans, they'll still know about people who are Batman, Superman, Captain America, Iron Man. They'll know who these people are. But when you say Steel, Steel they're like, who the fuck is Steel? Steel is the niche. most obscure hero I've yeah, never seen, and it and baffles me that they. He's a very to make... niche character. It's like if they had decided to do a Luke Cage movie before coming out with the rest of the Marvel series. Yeah, just bad everything. Luke Cage movie. Everything, everything about that movie was done wrong. The costume mm -hmm. looked rubbery. The acting was wooden. The plot was paper thin. Because again, Ooh, it was the Shaquille O'Neal. The only thing, the only thing that made that movie. Somewhat entertaining was Shaft. Shaft. Yeah, Shaft. Shaft. 
the original Shaft. You mean oh. is the the black private dick who's the sex machine with all the chicks? Shut yeah. your mouth! Yeah. You damn right. Shut I've your got mouth. an adaptation for you guys. I want to talk about Shaft. <laughs> this one was a comic and then turned into a cartoon and then a very, very brief lived sitcom series. Oh, cool. And has a catchphrase of SPOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
like really I was just stupid. mad that they didn't bring Gambit in uh, sooner so that him and Rogue could have their little romance what? thing going That on. was kind of creepy because Rogue was still in high school and Gambit was obviously a guy in his late 20s. Don't care! It's a uh, they could have made him his early college years at least. They could have made him early college years and had her in her senior year and it would have been fine. But exactly. they didn't! That's why he didn't stick around. Although anyway. technically, I think in actual Marvel, Marvel canon, Rogue is so many years younger than Gambit. Yeah, but it's still not. Uh, anyway, anyway. It's still I not anyway. to him. I, un I understand you feeling like it'd be squeaky if they got together at that point, but like I would have liked to at least have seen the beginnings of a friendship that would eventually, when they were adults, uh, you, lead to a romance. You know what would have been really cute, actually. If Rogue got this big, giant, one-sided crush on Gambit because he's charming and all this, and she tr and at the very end before he leaves, like, I'm sorry, Cher, you're too young. But maybe when you're older. Yes! Uh, please, 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 I'd have been so happy. No, no, that. but unfortunately, in the third season, Rogue got a crush on Logan. Oh, God. Why? Now that uh, is creepy. That is creepy. That anyway, is creepy. And unfortunately, well, and I'm fucking canon. Okay. We're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked. Look, I, will say that, I will say this much. Oh, go ahead, cutie. She's 12 and I'm fucking 90. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you saw know, that trailer. Really I, I will everybody will say, in that right? I will, I will say this. Um, is since DC has, like, so far, at least in modern time, modern times has become like the forerunner for their animated adaptations for the most part. They are slipping a little bit. Case in point, Teen Titans Go and oh, the new, oh my god. And the Don't new even Justice. mention Teen Titans Go. That does not exist here, okay? That's and, how and, bad it is. That does not exist. What is this Teen Titans Go? I will that kill is, you. That is technically Cartoon Network's decision, not really yeah, and it was a bad one. It's yeah. still so, based okay. on War It's still based, based on DC's. And Oscar they still characters. had to get the license and permission from DC to do it. Anyway, um, and the other one is just a little. It's I haven't seen a full. I haven't seen the full series yet, but this new Justice League series that's come out is just getting really weird. They're it's like trying, they first are trying to model it after the old Justice League series, which was. Great. It was brilliant. It was well written. Had great characters. Good stories. Not everything was great all the time, but they're modeling after that, which is promising. But it's, as I mentioned before, it's very juvenile. It is aimed at a younger audience, and it's sending mixed, wrong messages about certain stereotypes. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of like they've mixed Justice League, uh, Batman: Brave and the Bold, and some of the Justice League animated series, the animated movies that came out in the last few years. It's so strange. I mean, they had to get they brought back. Okay, so for those of you who do not know what it is, it's an entirely new Justice League animated series. Um, All Justice League action, action. apparently. They a whole new cast except for three people. They brought back Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Hamill as the Joker, and he said it was retiring. And I forgot uh, the guy's, I forgot the actor's name, but whoever played Cyborg in Teen Titans, he came back to play this Cyborg, which I'm happy he, about. He also played essentially um, the Green Lantern we're familiar with from the original animated series. Yes, uh, uh, not John Hal Stewart. Jordan. Um, John yeah. Stewart. Thank you, John Stewart. John Stewart. Oh, but it's, it's, so, it's so strange to hear Michael. It's so it's so here to. I'm sorry, Michael. Why am I saying Mike? <laughs> it's My so IG. weird to hear Kevin Conroy, Batman, and not hear his original, his original, the original rest of the trio of Superman and Wonder Woman, and it's just so strange. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not Batman Brave and the Bold horrible, but it certainly isn't good. Well, you want to know something funny about the original ones? Technically, what you're remembering isn't the same either, because between the Justice League cartoon. Mm -hmm that we know, and then the Batman and Superman adventures, those had two different Supermans. They did, but they were so close enough together that it didn't bother you. This one is jarring. Yeah, it's just a bit. But it's not as jarring as who they got to play Lex fucking Luthor. Oh, good. James Woods. He's not going to let this go. Hades. I gotta be honest, I'm not bothered by James Woods playing... 
It's just like, such a it? heel turn. I mean, even in the original Superman movies with, um, shit. Uh, we just talked Hackman. about his name. I forgot his name. Nah. Gene Hackman. Hackman? Even with ha- even with Gene Hackman, like, he was campy and fun, but James Wood is just... It's like he's trying to go for a stand-up comedian version of Lex Luthor. It's weird. No, no, no that's sure, what Lord. the show is trying to do. Who is okay. the actor who screamed wrong? Uh, that's uh, Kevin Spacey. Yes, Kevin Spacey. Like I said, probably my fav- one of my favorite. That's actors. campy. That was campy, but he was so much fun. Yes, yeah, so my favorite Luthor is still the one in the animated series because he was a threat. Yeah, he had silly moments, but that Luthor was a threat. He was legitimately dangerous. And everything right. went quiet. We're waiting for trade. Uh, we're waiting for trade to talk. Yes. He said anyway, has his head thing raised. Yes. In any case, uh, from what little I've seen of uh, James once acting as uh, Lex Luthor, we kind of off air. We kind of me- we kind of mentioned. Oh, he sounds. Kind of like James Wood. James Wood. Yes, James Wood sounds like James Wood. No, he sounds like how he was in uh, Hercules as Hades. You know, kind of the quick-talking businessman kind of angle. And I can kind of, I can kind of see that for Lex Luthor. Not exactly like I'm going to be president and destroy Superman, Lex Luthor. No, I see it more as the businessman edge of uh, Lex Luthor. Mm. Yeah, I think James Woods has the acting chops to pull it off. Yeah, it's just it's kind of a jarring voice for me. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I probably have to watch a few, uh, watch a couple more episodes to actually get used to it. But hmm. well, what we've been seeing so far for introductions has not been positive. No, and and I'll be honest, like like Ten brought this up, it is for a younger audience, but they're intentionally dumbing down a lot of the issues that made the Justice League kind of good. Like, great example, Wonder Woman is kind of a sexist bitch. No, she's she's a misandrist. And <laughs> for those of you that, don't know, that's well, that, man hater. And while that is s- suitable for the other Amazons of her of her co- country, it's not for Diana because Diana has always been established in prop at least when the character's been done properly as not just a woman who sees that men and women should be equal and are equal in all things but who tries to make the world better. She is nurturing as well as strong. She is kind as well as, well as, you know, know, intent. And the thing is, I would forgive Diana for having those ideas after she, if she, after she just left the mascara, but she, it's been established in this show that she's been with this team for a while, and she's still saying things like, he's a man, they'll betray, he'll betray you, just like all the others. And then you have Batman and Superman in the background looking at her going, really, bitch? More than that, the way they're portraying her is the way that they... They're also portraying her kind of dumb. You know, as one of those dumb, kind of hypocritical misandrists who... She's got a predisposed view of it, and she doesn't really care to think differently except in regarding with the people around her. It's not the view of Diana that should be. She... Wonder Woman is thoughtful, very intelligent, and does not say things without thinking things through. Exactly. And it's just, it's so weird to see her like this. Anyway, I just feel like, I really hope this isn't a, a example of things to come, because DC has done amazing animated work uh, in the past, and even recently with their movies. Hell, they made the Teen Titans animated movie good. They made Damian Wayne bearable to me. Think about that. Damian Wayne, one of my most despised characters in the Batman universe. They made him bearable in one of those animated movies. You do realize, honey, that not everybody hates him the same way, right? Well, I'm just going for my opinion. And in all honesty, I don't know why you can like somebody like that. He's just a little fucking brat. I haven't You're seen enough of the show for it. We're allowed to hate certain people. I mean, the back in Sher- back to the BBC Sherlock. I hate Mary, and yeah. no, pretty much the entire fandom really hates that iteration. But there are a few people who like her. I, I liked her point. in the debut episode when they were getting married. 
Because I your then team. you didn't know the other bullshit. To be honest, I've never good. seen anything of the old Sherlock's like novels and adaptions and whatever. So it well, happen. in those adaptions, let's just put, um I the only ad let's put it this way: the only adaptation that actually brought Mary Morstan in at all was or kept her there at least was the movies with RTJ. The yeah, rest either the guy, wrote her out yeah. in order to make way for the John and Sherlock show, or they like brought her in uh, right before the Right to Beck Fall, and then wrote her out. Right after. Her. Anyway, but getting yeah, yeah. back, getting back to the comic book act- adaptation scene, Marvel has already proven themselves to be fantastic, and I hope they continue with what they're doing. I mean, goddamn, everything they've by done the so looks, far. Uh, yeah, is, by the um, looks of because by the looks of the upcoming Black Panther. One, they're getting it right by making it pretty much an, a 99% black cast. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But they're also getting... They're also still uh, right now getting geared up for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, plus, um... Uh, plus, uh... Gosh, what is it? What is the other one? Um... Anyway, anyway yeah, but... Anyway, like, like I was trying to say, I really hope Marvel keeps up with their, uh, keeps up with this stuff, and I really hope DC learns because so far DC, you failed in the live action, and you're starting to go, you're starting to slip in the animated. We, lo- I love you for your animated stuff. Come on. I okay, think guys, we, we are up. going to. Wrap We're gonna do a wrap now, up so yes. we can get on to eight bits. Tree time mm-hmm. wrap up. Tree time wrap up. So tell, tell, yeah, tell, tell, tell the marvelous, me. wonderful Lauren good night. Tell her I said hello. And I'm sorry I will not be able to join y'all for a time, but I, I will anything. be with y'all. Sorry, you can't hear me. Hang on. No. No, we can hear. You'll you'll still be with them in spirit. Tell Senpai we with her in spirit. Um. Squirrel. Can you ask me, senpai? Squirrel. Yes. Can you unmute Shirley, please? Of course, everything goes dark. One second. I'm trying to run three things at once. Um. Yes, I'm gonna unmute Shirley, guys. One minute. Okay. Uh, so this has been. Okay. Ever Everyone, say goodbye. All right, then. Time. Okay, Shirley. All right, Later. folks. Thanks for listening to our rambles. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in, guys. And we'll be glad to see you guys uh, tomorrow night. You know, I hope, hope you enjoyed us uh, over at uh, 8BitX. Yep. Miss Rarity, your final Thank say? You. Thank you. From everyone here at Street Time, this is Miss Rarity saying... It's only four more years until your country will be free. Uh, <laughs> God help us all! You had to help say it. Us. He could be. Oh, no, relax. He'll get himself uh, impeached in no time flat. Uh, He's eventually going to grope the wrong person.